The 2B9 Vasilok stands as one of the most successful examples of Soviet hybrid weapon concept. Despite its versatility and effectiveness, the production and export of this gun mortar have remained relatively limited. The West has never shown interest in developing such a weapon. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the 2B9 and the factors that render it not so desirable. The 2B9 Vasilok remains indispensable for many countries that were former Soviet republics. Due to its direct and indirect firing capability, the West classifies it as a gun mortar or occasionally as a light gun. Its Russian definition, on the other hand, is Avtomatishesky Minomot, meaning automatic mortar. Yet, global interest in such a weapon has been surprisingly low. With the exception of Poland, the former Warsaw Pact members did not acquire the Vasilok. The 2S9 has never been adapted by the armed forces of Hungary, which produced this weapon under license for export. The West has not adopted a similar mortar system. The idea of developing an automatic mortar in the USSR emerged following the experiences of the Second World War. The Soviet artillery doctrine centered on unleashing shock-destructive power either by employing a large number of guns or multiple rocket launchers. Utilizing a medium-caliber automatic gun mortar was an innovative idea with unprecedented potential for defending fortified areas. In 1946, Viktor Konstantinovich Filipov began designing a static weapon that entered service with the Soviet Army in 1955. A year prior, this brilliant Soviet engineer, designer and inventor had also commenced work on a mobile variant of a new automatic gun mortar. Designated as F-82, the weapon completed field trials and was recommended for adoption in 1959. However, at that time, all parties believed that the next world war would involve nuclear weapons, making conventional forces irrelevant in this scenario. Furthermore, the Premier of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, believed that allocating the defense budget to missiles was the most effective and economical option for defending the motherland. Therefore, alongside numerous other promising projects, the F-82 program was cancelled. However, the 1962 Cuban crisis revealed that attempting to resolve all issues through the threat of mutual assured destruction was overly risky and stressful. Shortly thereafter, the USA was involved in the Vietnam War. Neither nuclear warheads nor atomic bombs played a part in this conflict. Even the superpowers required conventional weapons for regional wars. Thus, the Soviet Army revived the concept of automatic mortars in 1967. Thanks to its shock-destructive effect, such a weapon, which also has direct fire capability, would be ideal for infantry in both defensive and offensive roles. Consequently, in 1970, the USSR selected the 2B9 Vasilok, a modified variant of the F-82. The following year, serial production commenced. However, its existence was not revealed until the late 1970s. Nevertheless, its initial production was limited. To increase the rate of fire to 300 rounds per minute, the Soviet engineers opted for a relatively complex water cooling system for the barrel. However, trials demonstrated that such speed was nothing but overkill. A typical Soviet 82mm mortar round created a kill zone with a radius of 6 meters. Sending projectiles to a similar area did not result in any significant difference in the destruction. If the high rate of fire was no longer necessary, neither was the complex water cooling system, which resulted in higher costs, maintenance requirements and a greater risk of faults. In 1982, the 2B9M variant was introduced, featuring an air-cooled, thickened barrel with ribs to enhance airflow. This modification decreased the rate of fire to 120 rounds per minute, which was not problematic since the previous one was deemed excessive. The 2B9 is typically a part of the 2K21 unit, which also includes the 2F54 transport vehicle based on the Gaz 66 4x4 light track and a standard issue of 226 mortar bombs, 96 of which are ready fused in 24 clips. However, almost any vehicle can tow it. The gun mortar is mounted on a lightweight two-wheeled split-trail carriage. The towing speed of the Vasilok on roads is 60 km per hour, which decreases to 20 km per hour off-road. 
Its setup time is 90 seconds. When the trailing legs with light spades are opened, the width increases to 3.13 meters. The 2B9 features a screw type firing jack at the front of the saddle, which alleviates shock to the suspension during firing. A traversing top carriage supports the motor assembly, balanced by spring and cable equilibrators that run around the oversized trunnions. A hydro spring recoil system is attached to the barrel. The bus lock has a smooth bore barrel and a screw type breech block. Rounds are fed through a port in the right trunnion, linking four bomb clips. The 2B9 is typically fitted with the PAM1 optical sight, which magnifies the target's view three times, along with the K1 collimator. At night, the sight is illuminated by the PM2M illuminator. The gun mortar can deliver 100 to 120 rounds to the target within a minute. The sustained rate of fire for 3 and 30 minutes are 33 and 7 rounds per minute, respectively. The 2B9 can fire all 82mm Russian mortar rounds, which the 2B14 Padnos also use. The 82mm O832DU high explosive round creates a kill zone with a radius of 6 meters and produces 400 to 600 fragments. It is also effective up to an 18 meter radius. The minimum range of the Vasilok is 770 meters. In its low angle roll, it can fire a special anti tank projectile containing a fixed 75 gram charge capable of penetrating 100 millimeters of steel armor. Hungary which produced the 2B9M under license as the DE82, also developed a round that features both direct and indirect fire modes. It contains a copper line two-part shape charge capable of penetrating 100mm of armor. When the bomb detonates, the cast steel body disintegrates to create anti-personnel fragments. Its maximum range is 4300 meters. Armenia, Belarus, China, Iran, Kazakhstan, Laos, Russia, Syria, Ukraine and Uzbekistan still operate the 2B9 and its derivatives. The crew of the 2B9 is 4 people. In its traveling position, the gun mortar is 4.12 meters in length, 1.58 meters wide and 1.18 meters high. Its combat weight is 635 kilograms. The Vasilok has a range of 4,270 meters with a rate of fire of 120 rounds per minute. The elevation range of the 1.2 meter long barrel is between minus 1 and plus 85 degrees and it can be traversed 30 degrees in either direction. Throughout its service life, the gun mortar has been mounted on various tracked armored vehicles including the MTLB, BMP-1 and the BTRD alongside numerous 4x4 and 6x6 trucks. These are improvised variants based on simply placing the weapon on the vehicle. Kazakhstan also developed a heavily modified BMP-1 designated as the BMP-2B9 which features a 2B9. Similarly, Hungary developed various mobile Vasilok variants based on the BMP-1, MTLB and Unimog 2500H vehicles. However, none of them were accepted for service. In 2004, the US Army conducted trials with the Humvee mounted 81mm variant of the 2B9 supplied by Hungary but ultimately did not adopt it. Ukraine produces a new 1.6m long barrel for the gun mortar known as the KBA-152. China and Iran possess their unlicensed copies of the Vasilok. The Chinese version's designation is the W99. The People's Liberation Army Air Force Airborne Corps operates the EQ-2050 4x4 light tactical vehicle mounted variant of the W99 known as the PCP-001. Its 81mm export version is the CS-SM-1. The 2B9 was baptized with fire in Afghanistan. The first platoon of mortar companies in Soviet motorized rifle, paratrooper and airborne assault battalions consisted of six 120mm or 82mm conventional mortars. On the other hand, the second platoon, comprising three squads equipped with a single gun mortar each, utilized the Vasilok. With its drag fire capability and high firing angle, the weapon proved its effectiveness against Mujahideen raids and attacks from high ground in base defense roles. Its rapid fire feature generated a destructive shock effect to halt many assaults. Given the rough terrain in Afghanistan, the crew typically preferred the MTLB as a towing vehicle. 
Due to its high firing angle and rapid fire capability, the Soviet troops recognized that it was an ideal weapon system for countering convoy ambushes from high ground. Nonetheless, the 90 second setup time was rather lengthy, particularly during such occasions. Therefore, the soldiers began to mount the ready to fire vessel locks onto the MTLBs rather than towing the weapon. This practice was found to be highly successful and was later applied to many other vehicles. The gun mortar also served during the first and second Chechen wars by both sides involved in the conflict. Since 2014, it has fought in the war in Donbas and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Nearly all factions in the Syrian civil war fired the 2B9M at one another. Like the other 81 and 82mm medium mortars, the 2S9 is an infantry fire support weapon rather than an artillery piece. The versatility of the Vassalok, featuring both direct and indirect firing capabilities along with a high rate of fire, makes it an appealing solution for infantry. However, very few nations have shown interest in this design. And here are the reasons why. While versatility is one of the key requirements for infantry weapons, simplicity, low cost and low weight are equally important. The 2S9 lacks the latter three. Its crew can dismantle a conventional 81 or 82mm medium mortar into at least four pieces. The barrel, base plate, bipod or tripod and siding system. This design enables the soldiers to carry it. By using a rope, the crew can transport such a mortar even over steep slopes. The Vosslok always requires a vehicle. If this vehicle cannot access the area, a helicopter must carry it. Like many other Soviet Russian designs, the 2S9 is robust and easy to maintain and repair, though not quite as much as a four-piece conventional mortar. An automatic gun mortar design also increases both production time and costs. Moreover, a higher number of parts result in a greater logistical burden. A conventional mortar can be positioned in a complete defilade which protects the crew from enemy direct fire. To utilize its direct fire capability, the 2S9 is positioned in a relatively open area, leaving the crew exposed to nearby enemies or snipers. Furthermore, its improvised vehicle-mounted versions typically lack gun crew armor protection for the same reason. Therefore, we might say that although it has clear advantages over conventional mortars, Many nations have not opted for the 2S9 and its design philosophy as they have prioritized other aspects such as simplicity, low cost and low weight. As we always emphasize, the wonder weapon is merely a myth. The best weapon is the one that meets your requirements the most and aligns with your tactical thinking. And the vessel log is no exception. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.